Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fit Vegan Podcast. Today, I want to talk about the arch enemy, which is actually not your arch enemy, which are carbohydrates, right? We are, and again, in the first few months, well, the first month of the, the new year, so a lot of people have set the goal to lose weight, improve their body composition, become healthier, and I hate to see people suffer and develop a fear of carbohydrate when they're actually the most amazing thing that God could have created for our bodies. So today I want to talk about carbohydrates, why you shouldn't fear them and how you should implement them into your day-to-day -day nutrition. So one of the key things I want to debunk at first is the concept that carbohydrates make you fat. So the first component to that is it is not carbohydrates as a whole that make you fat. It's first of all, some of the sources in which those carbohydrates um, come in, right? So if we just compare a banana, which is carbohydrate versus potato chips, um, quinoa versus Oreo, a bowl of oatmeal versus a pizza, right? The source of the carbohydrate makes a tremendous difference on the impact that it's going to have on your health. So that is number one. If you're eating carbohydrates, but from crappy sources, it won't make you feel your best and potentially could lead to you putting on fat. The other component to that is SECO, calorie in versus calorie out. So if you are eating Oreos that are vegan and you are in a calorie deficit, you will lose weight. Scientifically, they've never been able to disprove the fact that when you are in a calorie deficit, you, you'll never put on weight in a calorie deficit. It's just impossible. They've never been able to debunk it. And there's years of years of study that go into that. Now, knowing that, that if you are in a calorie deficit, you will lose weight. If you're in a caloric surplus, you will put on weight. Now, the quality of the carbohydrates that you eat are going to make a difference on the long-term impact on your health, but it's going to make a difference in how you feel in the moment, right? I feel a lot better after eating a bowl of fruit than I do after eating a pizza, right? It's just common sense at this point. And you, I'm sure you've experienced it for yourself. I feel better eating a bowl of mango, strawberries, and banana than after eating a box of Oreos. It, you know, it's just, it's just common sense. So calories in versus calorie out, the source of those carbohydrates. Now, the other component that people see that carbohydrate makes them gain fat. Here's why. Way back in the day, the Atkin diets were very popular, and then it came back as a keto diet over the past few years. So here's what happened when you go keto. Here's what happened when you cut your carbohydrate as a means to lose weight. In your body, there's a thing called a glycogen reserve. There's a thing called glycogen that your body utilizes as energy. It is literally the body's preferred source of energy. Ketones are not the body's preferred source of energy because if it was, it would be so much easier to produce them instead of having to cut out everything from your diet. If ketones are your body's preferred source of energy, it would be very easy to produce them. And it's not, it's freaking hard and it's so hard to stay in ketosis. So it just tells you that that's not your body's preferred source of energy. Glycogen is the body's preferred source of energy. Now, glycogen, you can see it as the gas tank for your body, all right? This gas tank, when it's full, has a weight associated to it, right? We'll just use 10 pounds as an example, because when I did my body, my bodybuilding show and I cut all my carbs before I stepped on stage, which is for different means, because we're just trying to get like stage lean, which is different than losing weight. I lost about 10 pounds in two days because we emptied that tank right? So I want you to know that this glycogen thing is all over your body, your bicep, your tricep, your chest, your legs, it's everywhere. Glycogen storage is everywhere. So that, that tank of energy has a weight associated to it when it's full and it's restocked by you eating carbohydrates, which again, produces the source of energy that your body prefers. So what happens when you remove the foods that full, that fill up this tank of energy, well, this tank gets empty because you're utilizing it throughout the day because it is the body's preferred source of energy, right? So as you cut out carbohydrates and you go on with your day, the eating high fat part is just so you can get calories and it has nothing to do with anything else. It's literally, if you cut out carbs, you cut out a group, uh, you, you cut out a calorie group, right? Protein, carbs, and fat, you cut out carbs. You got to compensate somewhere else to get enough calories. And so you eat more fats because it's more calorie dense. 
But by removing the carbohydrate, you're not restocking this tank, but you're still utilizing the energy in this tank over the course of the next few weeks. And then this tank starts to get empty and empty, empty, empty every single day. And then people come in, they're like, hey, I lost 10 pounds in my first week on keto. I lost 20 pounds because some people are bigger and have a bigger glycogen storage. I lost 20 pounds by going keto. And then they lost that 20 pounds. And I'll be honest, after you empty your glycogen storage and you've lost that initial weight, which again is just glycogen, it's not fat. And then you continue with the process. Then what you're losing is actually fat, right? Because there's no more glycogen to be used. So there's two components to that. People that do keto, that cut out all their carbs, that lose an additional 10 to 20 pounds. First off, not very sustainable, not very fun. I love avocados. I just can't stuff myself in avocados. I love oatmeal. I love fruits. I love carby foods. Right? I love sweet potatoes. I love potatoes. I love quinoa. Um, I love beans and lentils. I love foods that are high in carbohydrates. So it's not very sustainable to not eat any carbs. And what happens because it's not sustainable, when people go keto, they lose that additional 10 to 20 pounds. And because it's not sustainable, eventually they end up eating carbohydrate. But what happens is when your body takes in carbohydrate, it's like, yes, we get to restock our tank. And then it starts filling up that tank because it finally has a food source that allows it to fill up the tank. But again, you put fuel in the tank, there's a weight associated with the fuel that you're putting in the tank. So then people put on weight. And then they think, oh my God, carbohydrates made me gain four pounds. Carbohydrates are making me fat. It's not fat that you put on, it's glycogen. You're just restocking your tank. And with every carbohydrate molecule that you take on in glycogen, there's a little bit of water retention that comes with that. Not an insane amount, but way more than if you don't eat any carbs, right? So then what happens is they eat carbohydrates and like, oh shit, I put on fat because I ate a bowl of pasta or oatmeal, which you can totally eat again, in our program and not put on fat, right? That's why people say that eating carbohydrate makes them gain fat because they go keto, then they eat some, it bumps up their weight and then they think they're gaining fat when it's actually just glycogen and your body is like, hey, yes, I get to pull, I get to put fuel in my tank. That's all it is, right? So going, and also I want to say one thing about keto. I think it was a study was on epilepsy. People have epilepsy. Um, something like that. And carbohydrate, they would say like a keto diet would be beneficial for them. And even they had a hard time, even though they had a condition that they had to eat for, they had a hard time eating keto because it's so unsustainable. So even people where their health is on the line, I, I'm not sure it was epilepsy. I was, I can't remember which one it is. Um, but even people who have a condition that eating keto would benefit their health, they had a hard time sticking with it because it's so unsustainable. So you who just wants to lose weight, who doesn't even have a medical condition, like you, you don't have enough drive to continue with it because you're like, your health is literally not on the line. So now going back to carbs, don't make you fat. We just proved it, right? Here's how you lose weight while eating high carbs. Keep your, keep your tank full all the time and just go in a calorie deficit. Right. So if you're meant to, if you maintain your weight at 2000 calories, for example, and we put you at 1800 calories for the ladies, not for a men, for the ladies at 1800 calories, we keep your carbs super high. We make you hit enough protein to help you retain and build lean muscle mass. So you'll be ranging from that 1.2 grams to two grams per kg of body weight. If we hit that protein, we're guaranteeing that we're retaining and building lean muscle right on top of your strength training plan. But for the rest of your calories, if we keep your carbohydrates high, therefore you're eating enough to constantly keep your tank full, then your tank is always going to be full. So don't, there won't be any weird fluctuations in your weight. And because you are in a deficit, you are going to lose weight. The only thing that you need to do to lose weight is be in a deficit. Keep your carbs high, keep the tank full so there's no weight fluctuation like that, and then go into deficit and then you lose weight. Hit enough proteins to make sure you retain and build lean muscle because we want to improve your body composition. And that's how you do it. You just keep the carbs high. There's no need to empty the tank because if you empty it, fill it up, empty it, fill it up, you're going to see so many massive fluctuations in your weight. So guys, that is how you eat high carb. 
and you lose fat. Pretty straightforward, but I just needed to present it to you from that perspective that people that do keto empty that gas tank, which there's a weight associated to it. And every time they eat carbs, well, their body's going to be like, yay, hey, let's maybe put fuel in that tank. They put fuel in the tank, then they put on weight and they think it's fat. It's not fat. You can't put on four pounds of fat overnight. It just, you can't, it's physiologically impossible. You can't do that. It just doesn't happen. It's going to be glycogen, right? It's physiologically impossible for you to put on four pounds of fat overnight. Your body just can't do that. All right. So keep your gas tank full, hit your protein strength training, and then slow progression in your calorie deficit and in your training. And that's how you're going to get the body that you want. So I don't want you to be fearful of carbohydrates this year. If you're currently eating keto and you want to transition to high carb, then what I invite you to do is you're going to have to go through the process of filling up your tank. So that might be you putting on an additional five to 10 pounds, but don't worry because it's not fat. It's just glycogen. It's not fat on your body. It's not fat that you have to lose after. It's just keeping your glycogen full. And I promise you, your levels of energy is going to be so much better. Your brain function is going to be so much better. You're going to have so much energy. Your sex drive might go up. You're going to feel so much better. You have more energy in the gym. You're going to get a better pump in the gym life is going to be better. Right. So, and we've had members, I think there's a few podcast episodes ago, maybe like 10 episodes ago for a member that was keto went high carb and lost a bunch of weight in our program. Right. So I invite you to listen to that episode. And she talks a bit about what that process was like for her. Right. And she's super happy now that she gets to eat a bunch of carbs and maintain her new body, her new lean body from being keto and suffering with like not being able to eat carbs. So I just want to eliminate this fear of you eating carbohydrates for the new year. So I hope this episode was useful. If you want guidance on how to do that, this is what we do with our members. We help them structure their nutrition. We build their meal plan, give them the recipes, tweak everything on a weekly or monthly basis, depending on how their body's responding. We change and adapt their workouts to make sure they continue seeing progression until they reach their goal. And then we help them increase their metabolism so they can maintain their new body. If you want that level of guidance, again, there's no guesswork. It's guaranteed results or double your money back. I have no issues saying that because we've never had to knock on wood, right? We, we provide amazing results for members. Then there's a link down below. You can fill out an application to get in contact with us, or you can send me a private message on Instagram, uh, sharing your interest in uh, the program. And then I'll just have a little conversation with you and share a bit more of what we do and what that looks like from our fit vegan app platform. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, if you did, be sure to leave it a five-star review comment down below. If you have um, any questions and I hope you guys all have an amazing day.